So since we were enjoying a somewhat relative peaceful uh, period of time, I decided to spend some time uh, off camera, not too much though, maybe a year, and uh, I came back for the peace deal uh, between the cops and the Jews. Here is something that we have not seen at all in the series, at least I don't think so. Uh, vassal ship. The cops decided to not only take full promises but also vassalize the Jews and now what they could do is enforce their religion. Now so far they have not done that but you know it's pretty possible that they will um, and then obviously annex them later. That would be really interesting to see I guess but um, yeah there, there we go. So other than that we uh, we have a new war that just broke out. We still have the one uh, independence war of, of the uh, Protestant subjects going on um, and we also have the Karas against the Massalians. That's something I would probably disregard. But the Qatar reformed imperialist wars. And um, more interesting than that, uh, you know, Protestant Canada is actually supporting the reforms here, is that Qatar is... The Qatars are being aided by the Valdensians here. That means these two nations have an alliance. And we just saw that the Qatars themselves were somewhat able to stand against uh, the Lollards and a somewhat occupied Fraticelli. Um, you know, if the Fraticelli would be at their full strength without having to deal with the Norse, I think they would have easily dealt with the Qatars. But, you know, now that the uh, Qatars are allied to the Valdensians, we might see uh, a power growing in the, well, west of Europe that could potentially rival this alliance bloc. Um, we have to see, but it's certainly going to be uh, possible. Now, of course, the Fraticelli look just mightily powerful. I mean, they don't only, uh, they not only just have the Bogomilis and the Iconoclasts to the east, but also the Lollots to the west. And, of course, they did not really do a good job uh, when it comes to, or when it came to bringing over troops to defend France, but still, they are a valuable ally, I would say. Now, uh, the Qatars declared this war mostly because they want to take over these two provinces, which I highly approve, and then they would only have to take Labud, and they would completely seal off uh, Iberia for themselves and southern France, and that would really make them look uh, not only powerful, but also extremely nice. I would really like that. Um, but also, uh, they managed to convince the Valdensians to join in on this, and <laughs> we just saw a really nice battle there, uh, because they want to take their cores back. And there's quite a few of them. So uh, the Valencians are probably going to grow stronger in this war as well. And, um, well, that would potentially give uh, give them a chance to stand a better chance against the Fraticelli. But we'll have to see. For now, we can actually see some Lollard separatists rising up. But I think that the uh, Qatars should be able to deal with that. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident, in fact. Alright, uh, yeah, we don't have any other wars going on, but we could quickly check out the Protestants. They have been at 41% uh, for a while now, so I'm guessing it's it's because they hold their capital. That is, is that actually, does that count? Um, it's a war of independence, so I'm not entirely sure what the war goal is. I guess we, we could quickly check that out if we go into the Protestants. They're being besieged here. What is the war goal? Defend capital at Chimans. Okay, so it's the... The Protestant Canada capital that needs to be defended. Well, there's no way the Protestants, with their meager forces, are going to be able to do anything about this. All right, let's uh, let's move out and uh, have the spectator mode again. Um, the Lollards decided to take over Iceland. I'm not sure if that's a new thing, but I certainly have just seen it now. No, I think they did, at least in the last episode they had it. Still, um, I, I find that kind of good. All right, so I, I think... Brazil is going to grow stronger, as I've mentioned. Uh, the Protestant Canada is not going to get anything out of this other than their independence. And the Reformed are hopefully going to take these three provinces. Please, I beg of you. Um, but all of their armies are being absolutely smashed by the Qatar alliance. Now, you can see the Slavs actually hide out a few of their forces. Uh, they, want to, they want to make some money. They desperately try to stay relevant. But that... That is long gone. You are never going to be relevant again. No matter how many uh, former Orthodox provinces you take, you are just you're just done for. In fact, you know what? Is the the Orthodox religion is still there? The Harufi did manage to convert them, but the Slavs have not yet done so. So we shall see. We shall see. All of these provinces down here are occupied. Well, all of them. There's only two, uh, but they have been occupied, and now it is basically just sending all of your forces to deal with, uh, well, the reformed homeland. Now, wh wh what are the Qatars actually doing? Where are you? I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. They're probably sending over troops to the New World to fight there. 
I could imagine. But yeah, now that the Protestants are completely occupied, um, I'm not really sure what, what what's what they're waiting for. I think we should see a peace here, uh, you know, in the, in the next couple of, of days, in fact. But so far, they are clinging on to uh, to this war. And that gives the that gives the Protestants some time to occup to unoccupy their provinces. Now they're running away, though. Hmm. I'm not I'm not entirely sure what these people are waiting for. It's occupied by the reformed. Oh, I see. This is not actually occupied. Oh no, this is occupied and reformed. Yeah, okay, never mind. For a moment I was like, hmm. But no, it, it's the right nation. I, I do apologize. Okay, Bogomlis are building troops. Okay, has nothing nothing to say though. Okay, we have a peace. And the reform did not take these provinces. As a matter of fact, hmm. Brazil did, however, manage to take at least one, uh, but not the other. So I'm actually kind of disappointed by this war. That was not... As, as well done as it could have been. Oh well. Um, we do have a few... No, I think this is the only other Protestant overseas holding that they have. Yep, this is the Protestant religion. Glorious, isn't it? Yeah, not really. Uh, they did... I think they... Oh, actually, they did give up a province here to the Reformed one. Okay. Well, I would have rather for you to take these, but I guess that was not possible. Alright, so now the reforms face this war. I mean, they have faced it the entire time, but now they actually need to deal with it. They have 50,000 men defending their capital. Certainly a smart move, but that's not going to be, uh, that's not going to save them. Uh, no, not at all. And still, we have a very peaceful world, which, you know, is, is fine by me. We had so many crazy wars. Like, I remember that we had, like, this page almost filled, like, with 10 or 8 wars at the same time. So, I'm glad this is not going on anymore, because it's a bit difficult to keep track of all these things. And, yes, I, I could always slow down time, but I, I think um, I don't really want to do that. Um, but, as I said, it, it's, it's fine if we don't really have that many wars that lets us focus on some of them more in detail. But I do want to take a quick look at the world in general right now, just to see how colonization is going. So we can see the Catholics are definitely making their way into here. The Karajites, I do believe, are still colonizing as well. Okay, I actually thought they would, they had stopped. No, that's going well. Fraticelli uh, have taken upon themselves to, yeah, colonize a lot of uh, Africa. They, um, they are definitely going after the, the Cape, at least the provinces that the Qatars have left. Uh, open um, and also after the Congo. Hmm. Okay. And the Reformed have now uh, taken a really big and nice chunk of uh, s well Southeast Africa. That looks really good. Uh, that's, that, that's a nice power base. But then again, if the fetishists think that they uh, that they they should own these lands, they will take them. That is for sure. Um, other than that, we have a war between apparently the Sikh. And the Vajrajani, if that is all the... Yeah, then the Sikh should easily win this because you guys are still Tech 16. I don't know what's going on with you, but that is just terrible. Um, Jane Separatists are here, but I do believe this... Well, who is fighting? Oh, those are the Janes. They, they use this opportunity to move around their forces? I'm not really sure what they're doing. They're no longer being guaranteed by anyone. Okay, that could be... Uh, Potentially interesting. The Zunis are going to have to face these rebels, but they're doing a good job. Okay. So, yeah, the Sikh are unsurprisingly pushing in relatively easily. Um, so, it's just a matter of what they want to take in this war. They're just going to take it. Now, I know that if we have a look at the development here, that the most prosperous w province in the world is Balasore. Development of 50. I think there's no province in the world that can, uh, you know, compete. Still, I'm not sure if that's worth it. I don't know if that is actually worth being... Uh, this is not London. London does not have 12 development. 41. Yeah, so I'm not sure if that... If a 50 development province is worth being behind 10 technologies in, in military. And the other ones as well. So, yeah, that's... Actually, look at this. Banda Oriental of Catala Plata is an extremely valuable province. Wow. They... They really put in a lot of a lot of points in that. Okay, now the Protestants, for some reason, continue to colonize here, and so are the Totemists. Um, they are... 
I guess the totem is, you know what, it's up, it's it's too cold for them up here. They they kind of want to have a place in the sun for themselves, so they took uh, they took upon themselves to to take it from the uh, or from the natives that can't really uh, defend their lands. Yeah, I suppose that's what happened. Okay, now um, this war is still raging on, and there's actually a Pro Protestant Canada of all people landing in Iberia and unseaging Vizcaya. Okay, well, I guess as long as the uh, as long as Navarra, which is the fortress, ten thousand men. Wow. As long as Navarra is under control of the uh, of the Qatars, I, I think that's all that really matters um, f uh, for them. Okay, so the Norse, uh, the reform managed to muster eighty thousand men. Uh, they're actually fighting Valdensians, but yeah, they're being reinforced quite heavily by the Qatars. Holy shit! How many men just streamed into this? That's crazy. Now, come on, finish it and kill these troops. I guess they're being blocked by fortresses. That that must be the reason. But you should be winning this war by a lot now. And we have way more wars going on. Okay, this one, Monophysite's Munitions, probably going to disregard that for the most part. But, you know, it's basically just going to be Monophysite's taking over these lands. That's that's mostly what's going to happen. Uh, Karat's fighting the Massalians, that's not too important. Nahuatl against the Mayans. Oh, yes. A big war that I definitely want to see. Oh, my God. And they are the ones that declared the war. Wow. That's going to end in a disaster for them because the Totemists, the Totemists and Nahuatl are probably, you know, equal in strength. And now with the Mayans on their side, yeah, th th they're winning this, especially because they're also defending. So, wow. Okay, let's definitely check that out. That is something I've been waiting for such a long time. And look at this, 90,000 Totemist troops. Wow, amazing, amazing. I, I guess we should give credit to the Nahuatl here because... You know, they're keeping it interesting. I, I wanted to see this war, and the Mayans were not going to declare the war, the Totemists were not going to declare the war, and uh, Nahuatl did. And they're actually, well, they were winning that battle. Just in time, though, we saw the Totemists reinforce. I'm not sure if that's enough. No, the Nahuatl won. The Nahuatl won that battle. So they are not as as outnumbered as we, as we might think. It's really hard to say, you know what, I'm actually going to have to get in this because I definitely want to know which nation, or, or yeah, what kind of what kind of forces the Nahuatl face here. Um, so they have under that, oh wow. Okay, so in terms of artillery, Nahuatl are actually, in terms of artillery and cavalry, they actually have an advantage of about 12,000. But in terms of infantry, they're 100,000 behind. So that's problematic. If they were the ones defending, I think they could have won that war. I think they could have potentially won this war, especially if it comes down to, you know, defending the uh, highland and mountain provinces down here. But I think especially because they're the attackers, they're going to have to give a lot of provinces back to the Mayans. And actually, you know what? Before I go forward, I want to leave this because I'm not sure if I'm in this that I might mess up the AI. So let's let's not do that. But we can check out the Mayans real quick. They have a lot of their former cores or current cores, I guess, um, still, or they, they already have that occupied. I hope, I just hope that they're going to focus on these lands first before they take over that. Because, yeah, um, otherwise it would look incredibly hideous. Okay, so there we can actually see a battle that is won by the Totemist Mayan Alliance. Nice. Oh my god, so many forces. Okay, um, but still, the Nahuatl are picking the fights relatively well. I can see them winning okay. Well, that one was just an overwhelming majority of enemies that crushed them. Yeah, I think they're just going to get overwhelmed by these 100,000 infantry that is just pouring into that country. Um... So, yeah, they're doing well, but I think every battle that they, that they try to take, although this one they actually won, uh, is going to end up in disaster eventually. Uh, because there's just so many more reinforcements uh, that are going to come in. But still, that's, that's good. As I said, we're going to give major props to Nahuatl for actually making it interesting and declaring this war. But of course, it was completely stupid to to even do that uh, we could quickly check out the great wars fetishes or great powers i should say fetishes and cops number one and two but once again only because of uh of the technology so that is not really representative uh in so far uh, actually a fraticelli 
The Fraticelli are number one. Hold on. Wow. Okay, so they have the most development, which, you know, really shouldn't surprise me all that much, but it still does. It still somehow does. Um, but the Qatars and Valdensians are... They're finishing off this war. They should be close to a peace deal soon. Only 11%. Well, they still don't have the capital. Which is a big problem for them, of course. Uh, the Fraticelli dealing with rebels. Wow. So they, the own development of the Fraticelli is 1,400, which is by far the most. Yeah, there's no one. And, you know, the nations like the Reformed and Shinto that come after them, they have huge subject nations that contribute a lot of the, the points to their great power ranking. So it's really the Fraticelli by far the strongest nation in this world. And they have their alliances, I think, still in place. Yes, they do. They very much do. But um, I, I have faith that the Qatars and Valdensians might be able to do something about them. Even if it's just in the defense of war, I think it's possible. Okay, let's go back to uh, to this war, though, because it kind of is more interesting since we have more armies that are running around doing all kinds of crazy things. So, yeah, there's a big battle. Ahuatl, actually, yeah, yeah, probably going to win, although, no, that they did win. Though I, I saw a force march totemist army there, um, but they decided, you know what, it's not worth it. Let's actually, let's actually, uh, yeah, not run right into that. Okay, so the... Now, Hotel are, are beaten. I wonder what the war score is like. Minus 21. Yeah, of course. Especially because it was an <laughs> offensive war. Why would you even do that? It's so bad. That was so bad. <laughs> oh, well. Um, okay, down here we see a bit more colonization. Uh, no one seems to be interested in that land. Brazil, Protestant Brazil is continuing their efforts here. So are the Protestants, actually. Um, okay, Africa is pretty much colonized, except for this region, obviously. But uh, it seems as though the, yeah, the Catholics are the only ones interested in, in that. So it's going to take a while. The Monophysites, oh yeah, they took over tons of Manichian lands. Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine provinces. Now, Bahrain was the uh, Manichian capital for a long time. Um, but I think they have now moved. Where is... Where is your capital? It's over here. I see. In the Spice Islands. Sumbawa. Alright. Well, it's going to at least be much easier to defend this one. Um, for the future imperialist wars. You should be a bit safer. Um, but yeah, there we are. Well, that was exactly what I expected. Uh, if I remember, I said that. Or if you remember, I said that is exactly what's going to happen. Alright, and there we have peace between the Qatars and the Fraticelli, and the Qatars did not take that. you bastards, why didn't you do that? Well, they're at least colonizing the rest of Italy now, which is which is good, focusing on, on Sassari and Pisa, but I do believe that the Valdensians got two provinces back. That was really it? Hmm. That is actually not as much as I would have hoped to see uh, being transferred. So I guess the reform did a really good job defending their lands here. Did they have to give up anyone? No, the new reformed Nova Hollandia are still colonial nations. So I really don't know why why the Qatars did so poorly. I mean, they won, you know. Uh, I'm not saying anything. It's just that I really would have expected them to take some more lands. Oh, well. Um, there we have the Copts going after the Karajites. I hope that this is an offensive war. It is. Oh, yeah, and of course, they now brought in not only their ally, uh, the Bogomilists, but also they brought in their subject nation, the Jews. Now, I did want to check if they enforce religion upon them. They have not done so. They have not done so yet. Okay, so they're being actually quite tolerant. Well, as tolerant as you can be uh, to a nation that you've uh, basically uh, taken <laughs> taken over um, entirely. I mean, they kicked them out of their starting provinces. They took all of all of this that the Jews, uh, you know, are colonized, and now they've just vassalized them. But at least they are not for enforcing that religion upon them, um, which is good. And that's somewhat nice. So the Karajites are focusing on the Jews, which I'm not sure if that's a smart move. Uh, you could really, you know what, if you actually had all of your forces up here, you could definitely push back the, the, the Copts um, by killing their armies. You know what? Actually, you have already pushed back the cops. Huh. That's interesting. Well, I, I definitely want you to take over your 
armies here, you can win this. I think you can win this if you don't get your troops smashed like that. Oh well, we're gonna return to this, but for now, I would like to see what's going on here. Holy shit. The Mayans are retaking everything that they have lost prior. Well, we're gonna see how these wars end in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.